हेलो स्टूडेंट्स अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू मीजो स्टडी सेशन अगेन नाउ इन टूडेज क्लास एज यू कैन सी आई बी टॉकिंग अबाउट वन ऑफ द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक फ्रॉम द चैप्टर मोलिकुलर बेसिस ऑफ इनहेरिटेंस विच इज डी एन ए रेप्लीकेशन सो दिस इज हाउ योर डी एन ए लुक लाइक अ स्ट्रक्चर इन विच अ लेडर लाइक स्ट्रक्चर इन विच दीज न्यूक्लियोटाइड्स दे आर अरेंज can you see these steps of these ladder so these are the nucleotides and these nucleotide of one strand they actually bound with a hydrogen bond to the another nucleotide present on the second strand to talk about the dna replication we have discussed various uh, experiments which actually gives us an idea that whole process of dna replication is a semi conservative now the whole process will be discussing today so, let's have a look so the dna replication the first thing is that it is semi conservative now what do you mean by semi conservative that means when we talk about its division the two strands which are present as you can say this is the first strand and the second strand these strands they separate and new strands they are uh, formed the new strands which are formed they are complementary to the nucleotide present in the first strand so like this this is called as a dna semi conservative dna replication now why this dna replication is important because when we talk about a cell division in cell division there should be equal distribution of dna so for the equal distribution of the dna we require that uh, overall amount of the dna they should double let's take an example of a s phase of cell division in the s phase of cell division the total amount of the dna they actually double itself right is it fine now the whole process is important and it should be free of error yes if there are error present in them it definite uh, it is quite definite that it will cause a mutation and even a single nucleotide knockout will causes disruption in the whole coding sequence right so around 2000 base pair are added per minute whole process of replication is a very fast process now this process is error free error free right and if error occur in case if error are there in this case it causes mutation it causes mutation there is a one principal enzyme present in this which helps in the dna replication and the name of that enzyme is dna polymerase and this dna polymerase another name we call it as a dna dependent dna polymerase dna dependent dna polymerase because they are using dna as a template and they are keep on adding these nucleotides right is it fine so this this is these are the certain basic things regarding the whole process of dna replication now the process of replication if i want to make a copy of a particular strand of a dna the first thing is i need a particular origin that this should be the origin from where the replication will start in case of prokaryotes let's have a look so this is how a replication fork look like definitely uh, i'll tell you what actually a, a replication fork is no i have a one strand of the dna and there are particular sequences at which these strands these two these are the parent strand they actually separate from one another and once they separate from one another a new dna strands they are synthesized which are complementary to one another now from one strand the two different strands like this they are formed right when we talk about the origin of replication that where should it start replicating or what should be the actual position for the replication one thing you should keep in mind that in case of the prokaryote there is always a single space or single place at which the this whole origin of replication occur which is called as a ori sequence I hope you remember the biotechnology chapter in that we have discussed regarding the ori the plasmid ori so these are the places for the origin of replication whereas in case of a eukaryote there are multiple places for this origin of replication so replication occur at the various places 
Now, the first thing you need to understand, I have two strands of the DNA, they are wrapped around each other like this. What I want is, I want to separate these strands. Yes, they will be separated. Once they will be separated, each of these strands, they will act as a template and the new strand will be synthesized with respect to these strands. Because the nucleotide which is present in the single strand will provide a base for the attachment of the other complementary nucleotide. In this case also, there will be addition of the nucleotide. In this case also, there will be addition of the nucleotide. So like this, this is a whole process of replication. Is it fine? Is it clear to you? Now the second most important step, the first was the origin of replication. The second most important step for the origin is, we always require DNTPs. Now what are DNTPs? That is deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate. And how it is formed? They are formed from the DMPs, the AMPs, the NMPs, etc. So in this case, the two terminal phosphates, they are again added because initially they are in a position of a monophosphate. Two phosphates, they are again added just like that of ATP. The last two bonds, they are high energy bond like this. In this case also, all these substances which are required, they are the ATP. D G T P, D C T P, T T P, right? And these are basically formed from D A M P, D G M P, D C M P, D. This is also T M P. H three P O four is added. Phosphorylase enzyme is added and in that condition there is a formation of these prerequisite. So the two prerequisites they are required. The first thing or the very important is these nucleotides because we want to add these nucleotide one after the another. And second what I require is a DNA polymerase. So these are the two things which are very important. Now let's talk about the whole process. So with this uh, for that uh, please focus on this diagram. So we have discussed regarding the initiation process. So initiation actually leads to the formation of the replication fork. Now how this replication fork is formed, let's have a look. This we term it as, this is a tongue like structure, this is termed as a replication fork, it's just like a, this structure, fork. Now how this replication fork is uh, formed, for that we require various enzymes. First thing you need to understand. Just focus on this particular diagram, on this side of the diagram only. These are the nucleotides which are having form, uh, which are actually in a hydrogen bond with one another. So what I require is, I want to break these bond between these nucleotides. And who will do this? That will be done by one enzyme which is termed as a helicase. Helicase. Now once you start separating two strands which are wrapped around each other, there will be initiation of the super coiling on this side. Yes, so super coiling will be formed. Now these super coiling will be relieved by another enzyme and the name of that enzyme is topoisomerase. Topoisomerase. Whereas in case of prokaryote, it is gyrase. It is gyrase. So two enzymes we have studied. First is a helicase enzyme which helps in opening of this fork and second is the topoisomerase. Topoisomerase helps in relieving the super coiling. So what it does, it negative super coil. Right? Now, because these nucleotides, these are the nucleotides, they are complementary to nucleotide present above. So chances that they can again bound to one another. So we have to stabilize that also. For that, we go for certain other enzyme which is single strand binding protein, SSBP. Here also these, sorry, this is not, this is these one are the, can you see these purple structures? So these are the SSBP. 
on this strand also single strand binding protein they will be added now what is the next work i have two strands which are single stranded and i want to make a copy of it how will i do that one thing you should keep in mind when we talk about one of the major enzyme that is a dna polymerase dna polymerase work in a fashion of a 5 prime to 3 prime activity now is it fine it moves or in the direction or it synthesizes in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction now listen very carefully i have two strands of the dna one of the strand of the dna it will definite uh, the, it, it, it is quite definite that it will run in the direction of 5 prime to 3 prime other will run in the direction of 3 prime to 5 prime now as you can see in this case in this particular case let's take an example like this one this particular strand which is formed this is a 3 prime and this one is a 5 prime and whereas this one is again a 3 prime and this one is again a 5 prime now listen very carefully so first thing let's talk about one of the strand that is from the 3 prime to 5 prime strand in this case there will be first of all addition of one another enzyme and that enzyme is termed as a primase dna polymerase cannot work until unless a sequence of nucleotides are there it can just extend the chain it cannot initiate the formation of these hydrogen bond so we require another enzyme which is a RNA polymerase or primase sorry enzyme which helps in adding the RNA primer. So once it has added the RNA primer 5 prime to 3 prime now it will be the work of the DNA polymerase to extend this chain. Now the DNA polymerase will come and it will extend this chain in this direction like this it will keep on extending it. Is it fine? Is it clear to you? So in this case the formation is occurring continuously because helicase is moving in this direction and it is continuously opening and DNA polymerase will also keeps on forming in this direction. So there will be continuous formation of another strand or daughter strand. Let's talk about so such type of strand is termed as a this particular strand is termed as a leading strand. Leading strand or it is also termed as a continuous strand. On the contrary, the second strand is termed as a discontinuous strand or it is termed as a lagging strand. Let us understand how this replication occur in another strand. Because it runs in the direction of a 3 prime to 5 prime. So what will be the direction of movement of our DNA polymerase? It is quite definite that it will move in this direction. Suppose it has opened this much. This particular DNA has opened this much. Now in this case there will be formation of, of first the primase enzyme will come. Primase enzyme will help in the uh, uh, accumulation of the DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase now it will come and it will extend in 5 prime to 3 prime direction like this. Now, now helicase is continuously moving on that side. As it is moving on the that side these single stranded structures they will be obtained further. And we want to replicate this single strand structure also. In that case, over to this side, there will be welcoming of another enzyme that is a primase again. So the primase over to this side, it will come again. Primase formed the RNA primer. Now DNA polymerase will follow it. And again, it will synthesize that strand in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So that means there is a formation of these strands, double standard strand, formation of these double strands. But not in a continuous fashion instead it forms in the discontinuous manner that is the reason this strand is termed as a lagging strand what is another name the lagging strand like this now listen very carefully the original or the parent strand which is running in the direction of the 5 prime to 3 prime right the DNA sequence it will continuously form on the contrary the second part it will form in the certain gaps. So certain gaps they will be present in them and these gaps now listen to this very carefully. Now what we want is these RNA 
primers which are formed, we want to replace it also. For that, we have various enzymes like DNA li li lyases are there and in fact the ligases are also there. So, they will be removed and the ligases will come and they will stick these ends. And similar happens in case of the legging strand also because in this case only, see, one more thing. In case of leading strand, we require only a single DNA, uh, sorry, primase enzyme. In this case, we require multiple times these primase enzyme. And there is a formation of large number of this primer. And these primer, they has to be removed. Later on, yes, they are removed and they are being joined by the DNA ligases. Yes, these also happen. So this is a whole process of a DNA replication. Now, question arises, what can be, like, what are the different type of question which can be asked from this topic? What is the direction of synthesis of DNA or what is the direction of a replication of DNA? What will be your answer? You have four options, 5 prime to 3 prime, 3 prime to 5 prime, both of these and none of these. What is your answer? Your answer should be 5 prime to 3 prime. It is a 5 prime to 3 prime direction uh, uh, like in which it is being synthesized, right? The first thing. Second thing, understand this very clearly. When we talk about these two strands, they require certain enzyme. And another question which can be asked from this enzyme is, the supercoiling is relieved by which enzyme? What will be your answer? You will say, ma'am, it is topoisomerase. And in case of prokaryotes, we have is gyrases. And who opens these strands? What is your answer? You will say, this is a helicase. Now, who prevent the binding of these single strand again? That is a single strand binding protein. Now, one more question which can be asked from this topic. Now, when we talk about the DNA polymerase, so DNA polymerase in the DNA replication is a DNA dependent DNA polymerase, is RNA dependent DNA polymerase, both of these, none of this. What will be your answer? Your answer should be DNA dependent DNA polymerase. We are not concerned here with the transcription. In transcription, yes, I will be talking about transcription also, where uh, in the transcription, the situation is completely different. So this you need to understand that it is a DNA dependent DNA uh, polymerase. And second thing is uh, the replication occur in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. There is a formation of the replication fork. Leading strand is formed, in this case the lagging strand is formed and whatever the nicks are there that are being sealed by the DNA ligases and like this the whole separation or the whole formation of the DNA occurs. And very important question, is it uh, like it is a semi-conservative DNA replication, right? So this was all about the DNA replication process. So all these steps, they should be clear to you. First thing, origin of replication. Second thing, the charging of nucleotide. Then, elongation step. All these steps, they should be completely clear to you. And hope, like my initiative to make you understand this topic is fulfilled. So, we'll be meeting in the next one. We'll be discussing some other topics. And if you have any doubt, you can write to us that, ma'am, we have a doubt on this topic. And we are always with you. We always want to sort each and every doubts you have so that you can easily attain your goal. So take care, keep watching. Thank you so much students for watching this.